Praise the Lord. We praise God for all that he's doing. This is the day Amen. that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Somebody need to say this is the day. This is the day. The day. That the Lord has made. Yeah, the Lord has made. Let us rejoice yes, and be glad in it. I don't yes. know about you all, but I'm excited to be here in uh, the house of worship. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to come in to praise our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and thank God Amen. for all that he has done. Yes. The book of Psalm uh, declares these words. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit up in the seat of the scornful. Mm -hmm. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, yes, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Yeah. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water yes, that bring forth his fruit in his season. Uh -huh. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Yeah. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Yes. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, mm -hmm. nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, mm -hmm. but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. We thank God and, and we praise God for all that he's done. Uh -huh. We're going to ask uh, Reverend uh, Kenneth Wellers if he would come now and give us our invocation. Selection that is going to be led by a musician. Uh, let us have a uh, selection.
worship song, something that we all know. <coughs> Anybody have a, a, a one on their heart that everybody know? Every mm -hmm. praise. Hmm? Every, every praise. praise. Every praise. Just, every <laughs>
Yesterday. Amen. 
Next week, they'll be pastors. Yeah. People coming next week going to skip that part. But <laughs> it was a wonderful, wonderful experience over at Jehovah Christian uh, Ministries. Our good friend, Reverend Dr. Jesse Paul Clay, mm -hmm. served as the catechizer. These people worked for seven months. Mm -hmm. Amen. Seven months to study the material. And it, it took them so long that they got on my nerves. I wasn't even catechized. It took so long I had to start pressing everybody. Catechized, I pressed them too. They got mad. People been getting mad at me lately. I'm like, you know, my big sister's here today. And when I was a kid, she used to fight all of my fights. Now I want somebody to say one thing to me. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, I'll tell you right now. You get mad. So we're going to ask Minister uh, from Reverend. Reverend. Reverend uh, Jarrell Bass to come up and give us, and he like to give long speeches. Oh, amen. Well, right. a one minute talk on what he feels today as he is a newly uh, appointed, ordained. ordained reverend. Amen. 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 They've been studying for seven months. I've been studying a little longer. <laughs> I think this is my third ordination process that I've had. Uh, and that's including the one I've had with uh, Maple Spring as I graduated. Uh, so you would think that I know the Bible. You, you would think that I, I know the living word as much as uh, the process. It's, it's a learning process. It's yeah. a mind process. It's an yeah. obedience process. And if you don't have it, whew, don't rush it. Don't rush it. Plan with God's work ain't something you want to do. If God calls you, you'll make it through. You'll make it through. So I, I just want to say to Pastor, thank you for, I'm not going to say many months, I'll say many years of pouring yeah. into me. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> big sister here or not, you know, I still might have to give you some tackling. <laughs> but I thank you for the hard work. I thank you for uh, the pressure, um, the pain. God knows the suffering just came. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> um, so, I just want to say, you know, it has been an honor, has been a blessing to learn so much about our faith, learn so much about the Creator, yeah. and how to be humble to His people and serve with gladness. Yeah. Uh, so I thank you not only to my pastor, but also our first lady. Yeah. Amen. She was in the process with me, but she also was in the process outside of the process. Mm -hmm. So she did a lot behind the doors that she doesn't know that helped me. And we can talk about that later, but I thank you for them too, First Lady. And, and I will say congratulations to both of you as well. Uh, it's been many mornings we sat on the phone, late night into the mornings. Let me rephrase that. I don't want you to think we started in the morning. But late nights into the mornings, you know, God has placed all three of us with each other to be able to communicate and you know if we needed help we were able to call on one another yeah. Amen. so to pastor and sister Nadine if I woke you out you're asleep uh, you don't have to worry about me doing that no more <laughs> amen amen, amen. To greet you, we're going to ask uh, uh, Reverend Kenneth Weathers Amen. Amen. to come and uh, share with us uh, uh, one minute. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Good morning, church. God bless. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. It's indeed uh, great to be here this morning and just to think about the goodness of God and all that he's done in my life and all the support he's given me. I thank God for the uh, opportunity to serve him even in greater capacities. Amen. Amen. And uh, I just want to thank Archbishop elect Jerry Jones for all the love and support. Yes. Uh, all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ who supported me, my mother, amen. My lovely wife, Amen. Amen. she's been my rock through the process, Amen. Uh, trying to work, study, uh, and keep moving and grooving with uh, two teenage kids. Amen. Uh, she's been my rock. I want to thank God for her. Amen. 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 But you know, I look forward to the challenge. Uh, whatever God has in store, I'm ready for it, and I'm ready to move and groove. Amen. All right. Amen. We have a thing, you know, I'm the one we say, uh, we say, Shoot, move, and communicate. So I'm going to execute. Amen. Amen. Shoot, right. move, and All communicate. Right. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to move and groove as God directs. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Amen. Uh, I'm not a military person, but it sounds to me he's talking about some weapons of warfare. Amen. You know, shoot, move. Yes, Spiritual warfare. Yes, sir. Shoot, move, and communicate. Yes, sir. Mm. I'm gonna think about that one. Okay, next. Uh, we had, and I love this brother and one in the back as well. I told them when they was getting ready for the council yesterday uh, that they are now joining the hip because they went through that process together. Amen. So I say, and I think it was Reverend Weber said, "You mean I have a, a sister?" One of them said, "I, I, got, I always wanted a sister oh. for you." I said, "You got a new sister." She got some new brothers. Amen. Because they, they walked through together Amen. the fire. Mm -hmm. And it was not easy. Mm -hmm. I didn't help my wife that much. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I said I didn't help her that much. <laughs> she did about some days she almost said she wanted to talk and talk back. And, so, and then she just came to me and she said, I just don't know how to do it. Can you help me? You're going to reach the breaking point. She going to reach the breaking point. I said, okay, I'll help you. <laughs> but I can't. Oh, well, she said something more. Okay, then another day she came to me. Well, what you, you going to help me? What you going to Keep talking. Keep talking. Keep talking. Uh, remember, we got visitors today. Show our visitors that we're worthy to visit. Amen. Amen. So we're going to have the First Lady, Reverend Patricia A. Edmund Jones. Let's praise God for all of you. Good morning, Saints. Good morning. I, I, I just want to say thank you to our Archbishop, our pastor, our servant leader for um, acknowledging us and ask, um, moving us forward in the catechism and having um, Archbishop, excuse me, Bishop Jesse Paul Clay to be our catechizer. And it was a journey, and I appreciate being on that journey with my two new brothers, Reverend Darrell Bass and Reverend Kenneth Weathers. Um, you know, we had 21 papers, 21, and all different subjects um, about the Bible. And of course, initially we said, well, why do we have to do all of this? But it was a learning experience. Our catechizer, he took the time out with us individually as well as collectively. We met initially every other week and then it went weekly but we had to have those papers today and we had a catechizer who would call you up and say where's that paper Ooh. six o'clock in the morning three o'clock in the morning and at midnight and um he would give them back because he said this is not right he would go over with us he would um, give it to us again i know one time nadine had said that she thought he had moved in with them he talked so much <laughs> but you know i, I appreciate that because we did we learned a lot as um, yesterday, it was um, it was very it was a it was a nice day. Mm -hmm. Your pastor asked me, "Well, how did you feel when I was riding over there?" Mm -hmm. I said, "I'm nervous," and he he said, "Don't be nervous; it's not going to be bad." And then when the three of us met, he, um, the catechizer said, "Well, how do you all feel?" We all said, "We're nervous," and he said, "Well, don't worry about it." He said, "If you don't, um, if you have a question that you don't understand, ask me to repeat the question." The council was nice to us, but they were direct, and they did want to hear what we had to say. They had reviewed all of our papers, 
And praise God, they said that they thought we had the theology down pat, but they did have questions for us, and they said that we could answer them all. After, the, after we finished with the council, we were excused from the room, and they took the vote to see whether or not we would be moved forward into um, the role of a reverend. And we came back, our archbishop said that they had um, suggested that we move forward, and he approved what they said about us. So we were now reverends. Reverend Bell. Yeah. 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 And um, if there's one thing I want to say, on Friday night or Saturday morning, a catechizer, he, he texts us, it was midnight, and he said, tomorrow is the day. Be relaxed and be sharp and concise. No long answers. If you don't understand the question, ask for a rephrase of that question. Take your time, the questions, and God bless. And so each one of us responded <laughs> each, each, each one of us responded to him it was like midnight he said I can't believe you all are up and we said well how can we sleep we're going over these papers we're praying we're studying we're doing all of that but when Saturday got here we were excited at the end of the day and I, I have one more thing I'm sitting down I'm sitting down but I will say this we were so happy that we had passed the test but if you ask any of us what we did yesterday after that, the uh, catechism was over and the council had approved us, we went home and went to bed. <laughs> we went home and took a nap. <laughs> Amen. So, um, the man, he's my good friend. I've been on uh, Reverend Clay for over 25 years. I was married. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. he called my house so much. I, every time I, I, I stop, I'm like, oh, Nadine, I. Who, who is that calling here this time of night? I'm checking it out, you know. But we're going to ask uh, one of the, I know this is an unusual service. We're here serving for Christ. We can do what the Spirit is to do, can't we? Amen. So uh, one of the council members is here, uh, Bishop-elect Adolphe Jefferson. Is here with us. We're going to ask her to come up and give her impression very briefly. Come on and give your impressions about the activity yesterday. Now, I have to tell you that, come, come on up, come on up. And, uh, uh, but Elder Jefferson, uh, Bishop elect, she'll be uh, consecrated to Bishop next week and when we go to uh, Florida. And um, it got so tight in the council session. They were talking about the candidate at the time, pro, uh, what they thought about abortion. Amen. And we had a, a eccentric bishop there who was providing insight into the scripture. And y'all know the finger that comes up, <laughs> you know, in the church. So that was just to put up. Something said about that. And then I told my catechist, I said, You see the council now arguing with each other. Yeah. Took the attention off the candidates today. And the other judge had to get to clarify the point. So we, we were very happy to have her here. And she's a bishop elect and she was on the council. Uh, just talk about your impression. What, what, what have you thought about the candidates yesterday? That's all. Okay. Oh, that's <laughs> bishop elect. Praise God. 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 <laughs> but truly it is a blessing and an honor to even be alive at this point in my life Amen. I, uh, I just feel blessed Amen. because all of the candidates I call them candidates <laughs> have the elects they were excellent Thank you. they were really excellent you know, they might have been uh, nervous, but it didn't show. It did not show. And so we have to be praying for them. I've been praying for you all. Thank you. Because I've been there. <laughs> and to uh, Archbishop Elect Jones, thank you for the opportunity. And you know, you could have wound up by yourself and not took nobody with you. That's right. Yeah. Could have done that. Amen. But God. But God. Amen. 
God has a way of using who he wants to use to help who he wants to help to get them in the place they should be or he wants them to be. So I'm thankful to the good Lord. And I'm excellent. I'm really thank, thankful because my son, Reverend Kenny Weathers, mm -hmm. that's my baby. Yes. Yes. That's my son. Yes. Yes. And I just want to give God. And I just want to give God some thanks because we've come a long way, man. It wasn't easy being a single mother. It wasn't easy being a single mother coming up. Trying to raise three sons in this world. Amen. But God. And so all I got to tell you is that by the grace. Mm, of the Lord Dr. Uh, Edna Battle, stand, please. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Amen. I'm getting battles. She's a, she's a minister in training here at our church. MIT. And let me just say this. We don't just license people in our church. This is not a licensing factory. Right. Amen. Amen. But people have to show themselves word. That's right. I'm receiving yeah. a license. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You come in and get a license. No, we, we are we are bona fide registered church with the United States government, Department of the Treasury, and the State of Maryland. Yeah. And so we are very there by 501c3. For two organizations, the Gospel Truth Global, welcome worldwide friends mm -hmm. around the world who are watching us in those foreign countries, and welcome Servant for Christ congregation who are not here today. I want to thank uh, Dr. Edna Bauer. I called upon her mm -hmm. to help with the refreshments, mm -hmm. and there was no hesitation, no pushback. She went to the store, picked up the refreshments, and it was beautifully laid out. Mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all advise me. I'm thinking about making her a pastor aide. I'm thinking about it. You know, we need her to need someone that's going to help without hesitation and no pushback. Just help. Amen. So y'all advise me what y'all have observed about her since she's been here at our church. But we thank God for her service yesterday. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Beautiful. Well done. Thank you. Amen. I wanted to read the scripture to you, then we're going to move forward. We're not having a regular follow the program service here today, so get your grandmother out of the bedroom. Your niece and nephew, tell them to get ready because the preacher is about to preach. Amen. All right now. All right now. But before we do, I just want to read a scripture to you uh, that the Lord has laid on my heart because there's some confusion about uh, how are people unevenly yoked? Okay. Amen. People say, well, we're not evenly yoked. And a lot of times what they say is that they're not evenly yoked because of some ideology or philosophy. Okay. It has nothing to do with ideology or philosophy. First John chapter 4 gives you the description. Now, in Christianity, what we mean by unevenly yoked is talked about in First or Second Timothy. When Paul is giving uh, Timothy some instructions about his mother Eunice and, and grandmother as well, okay. but here in First John it says, "Beloved, chapter four, verse one. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, mm -hmm. because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God." Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Okay. Verse number three. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. Mm -hmm. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Well, if you have heard that it should come and even now already is it in the world. And you see, in other words, what it's saying is unevenly yoked is the spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ is coming to the world. Okay. Non-believers. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's being unevenly yoked. Mm -hmm. But when you believe and confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and he was crucified, buried and resurrected on the third day, you know that he is coming. That is the spirit of Christ. That is the unity in the body of Christ. Okay. It's not based on what your attitude is about a car purchase or something of that nature. Or whether or not you are agreeing with someone. The main thing you need to agree about is that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Somebody say Jesus Christ is the Son of God and he came in the flesh. Somebody say that. Somebody say that. And he came in the flesh. To save you and me. Say it. So I just wanted to share uh, that, that one scripture with you. I want to acknowledge our visitors today. Um, I'd like for my uh, visitor, Reginald Bigelow, and his beautiful wife, Marva L. Bigelow, to stay. Amen. Now, 
I just want to say, first of all, thank you. Thank you for coming today. You do not know what it does for me personally. I'm grateful Amen. and I'm humbled by your presence. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, I want to tell you all something. This is, I think we had like eight brothers and sisters in our family, our mother and father, our parents. This is my oldest living cousin, Reginald Fitzgerald. His, his mother and my father were brother and sister. And if you look at him, look at me, I think he looked a little bit better, but you can tell we got the same face and features and stuff. Amen. He's been handsome all his life. I'm, I'm still trying to come up. Amen, somebody. Amen. Look, man, look at him. Look at his face, look at my face. He got the same features. His mother and father, how many was it, Rich? Was it eight of them? Eight of them? Six, okay. See, he, he no more. Amen. He is our patriarch Amen. of our family. Mm -hmm. So he looked good for, what did you say he was 80, 82? He, look, look at how he looked. Amen. We got good genes yeah. in our family. Amen. All right. All right. Now, standing beside him is his wife, Mom. Mm -hmm. let's, let's praise God for all you doing. My big cousin. And we're so happy to see you. So happy that you're here. Yes, amen. Now on his right is, y'all know my sister, but I mean, we call her uh, the truth. We call her the truth. That's my sister. Stand up, Mary John. Amen. We call her the truth. Because no matter what happens, she's going to tell you the truth. No matter how bad your feelings are hurting her, you don't, you know, she's going to tell you. I, I try not to talk to her too much. <laughs> See, this is go talking again. This, this talk back church. The matriarch of our family. So we got a patriarch and we got a matriarch. And I love my sister. I thank you for your leadership and guidance, Reggie. I love you, man, for your humility and your wife. Thank you all for coming. You may, do, do you want to say anything? I want to hear something from you, Reggie. Come on, say something live. Thank you, Mr. Right, Pleased to be here. Uh, matter of fact, Oh, Lord Jesus, somebody help me, man. How about the drummer? Y'all know the drummer? Where your people, man? Go ahead, sir. Oh, if you tell me that my, my, my big sister ain't here, I'm going to have to give her a, a tip or something, a dollar or something, and invite people to the church. I don't know what's going on here. Lord Jesus, thank you. Right. You have anything you want to say, big sister? I just wanted to say that um, I'm happy to be here today with all of you. Amen. I'm very proud of your and all the men who's in here and his membership. I'm here today, but I'm not going to be here long because I want to get to this last service before he leaves. So you have a good trip. Thank you all very much for coming. We're so happy to have you. We want you to come back again whenever your schedule allows. You're always welcome to come and worship as our church continues to grow. Invite your friends like my sister did. Invite some people to come. And matter of fact, all the members. 
invite people to come. We need to grow and get out of this space. I want y'all to pray that we will get out of here. God has blessed us. It's a beautiful space. We started from scratch, from nothing, and look what the Lord has done. Amen. So we want to move forward. Amen. 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 Thank you all. If you have nothing else to say, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Okay. Now with that, we're going to get right into the sermon because we already took up all the time. Uh, so I want to um, just ask uh, Minister Arlene to just come and sing a song for us, song preparation. Amen. And I want to say, uh, before you do, um, it's Minister uh, Arlene Robinson, Minister Dave Petras, and Minister Barbara Brown. Can you stand up and face the congregation? Now, we just ordained three ministers to reverence. The next level is pastors. These three ladies, as well as the three that got ordained yesterday, will be ordained pastors Amen. next week. Amen. Next week, we will have six pastors. Now, these three are reverends. The next level up is pastors. So, they will be ordained as pastors in Orlando, Florida. Uh, Jacksonville. I got Orlando on my mind. Jacksonville, Florida on next, what is that, Friday? Friday. Next Friday. The 22nd. The 22nd. We praise God for them. We have Mr. Elect Dr. Jefferson will become a bishop. Raise your hand again. To be a bishop on the 23rd, along with two other bishops. And, and, and then on Sunday, the 24th is, is when uh, I am scheduled to become an archbishop. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have uh, I'm, 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 while you're standing. Mr. Arlene, grab one of those microphones, tell me your number, and sing a song of preparation. Before you do, I just want to introduce uh, Reverend Patricia Jones, is, is my wife. She keeps talking about we've been married for 27 years. I, I don't know, I think I must have missed a couple of years uh -oh. in there someplace, but I'm saying 27. <laughs> and um, she, um, just tell me your number. No, no. Okay, I'll do it. And, and so she has been a founder of this church from the very beginning. And we're appointing her as executive pastor of the church which she will be running the day-to-day -day operation in my absence when I'm traveling and moving around. And also, she will be like the assistant pastor. Amen. Not assistant Amen. to, Amen. the assistant pastor. Amen. 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 She earned that. Mm -hmm. Amen. So there's, there's no issue with that, and, and we'll have a formal notification. Okay. Now, when we all get back from Florida, we're going to have a celebration of all six of the pastors who will be ordained, consecrated. People have asked for the people who can't go with us to Jacksonville. People want to know, can we have a celebration? Yes, we're going to have a celebration. Amen. And we're going to have a public ceremony Amen. so that the people who can't go uh, will be able to come and celebrate with their loved ones as well. And that's beautiful, right? Amen, somebody. Yes. Yes. But Patricia Jones, you all know her. Helen from Gary, Indiana. I'll just run through her very quickly. She graduated uh, 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 from Howard University with mid business and a bachelor's in business administration and public administration, I believe. Maple Spring Baptist Bible College and Seminary, uh, where she got her master's in Christian counseling from accredited institutions. Also, she's serving on several boards and in several leadership positions right now uh, with the Maple Spring Baptist Bible College and Seminary, where she serves as the vice chair of the board. She serves with the, with the missionary Baptist. Wives and Widow, uh, as the second vice president mm -hmm. of that organization. And she also served the National Capital Baptist Convention as the vice president of the Women's Auxiliary. Mm -hmm. In addition to serving in various capacities here at our church, she served in every single capacity. She is the only ordained deacon in this church where she surpassed that now. And she has been our treasurer, our church administrator. She's done everything that you can conceive anyone doing inside the church. And handling the finances and so forth. People want to take the finances from her, but they weren't tithing. How can you handle the finances if you're not tithing into the church? Can't do it. And so she's been faithful, not only in the ministry, but as a wife. 
I couldn't have married a better person. So all you looking out there that wanted to be, I'm sorry. Amen. Thank God for my wife. Amen, somebody. Amen. Yes, We're going to hear a song preparation. The next voice you hear will be that of uh, Reverend Patricia A. Edmund Jones. Amen. 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 I'm going to tell you something. Before his mother passed, his mother and I had a conversation. She told me she picked your wife. Amen. You better talk to my sister about that. <laughs> That's what mama told me. But Amen. I thank and praise God Amen. for his goodness, his mercy. Yes. And my favorite song that comes to mind. Amen. Because of who you are, I give you glory.
Father God, we come at this time just to give you all the praise, all the glory. Lord, we thank you for waking us up in our right mind. Yes. <laughs> Bring us here to this place. Yes. We welcome you into this place to be with us. We thank you for all you've done for us and continue to do good for yes. us. We ask you for our time and mercies here as well as when we go to Jacksonville in this week. Yes. And we thank you for allowing us the opportunity yes, to serve you. Yes, we just ask you to continue to be with us. Yes. Amen. 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 Good morning, all. Good morning. I, I think that we've had a wonderful service thus far. Amen. You know, I, I just wanted to piggyback on something that my sister-in-law said, Mary. She was saying that she wondered when um, her brother would stop going to school and how much education did he need. Well, I think that one of the reasons he married me was because he was going to school because he said, where did you, where do you work? And I said, the Library of Congress. He said, oh, you have access to all those books, right? <laughs> I said, yeah. He said, okay, good. Um, I, I, I need a couple. He gave me this long list. <laughs> but he, he, he looked at them, he read them, and he was going for his doctorate. And I was just, I was happy to be able to help. <laughs> and, I, and I would like to say thank you, Archbishop, for everything that you have done for myself as well as for all of us. Amen. So thank you all very much. We, we will do the offering after the, um, the, the service. Amen. You know, today, I'm, I'm, I don't have a hoopla sermon. I, I guess I'm not a hoopla person, but I wanted to speak to you all about the gifts of God for the people of God. Okay. I'll be coming from Romans 12, 1 through 8. If you'd like to stand, Romans 12, 1 through 8. Once you have found it, say amen. Amen. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and that ye may prove what it is that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one member one another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy that is prophesied according to the proportion of faith, or ministry that is weight on our ministry, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exalteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, that he ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. We have read Romans 12, 1 through 8. And what I'd like to discuss with you all today is the gift of God for the people of God. Amen. 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 You may be seated. How do you think of yourselves? There are two options. We can allow ourselves value, attitude, conviction, and relationship to be influenced by the world. Or we can be remodeled, transformed, reshaped, and redesigned from the inside out by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. How can we know God's will be for our lives? If we are not careful, we can mistake God's will for something else. And we will be intimidated by fear. Well, fear not, because the will of God is realized by the direct influence of the Holy Spirit. To find God's will in our lives, we do not have to be supernatural. All we have to do is know how God speaks to us and how we hear him. It is about learning how to spot his will when we see it and then choosing to follow it. Mm -hmm. What is God's will like? Well, the will of God includes everything that God desires or wishes to happen in heaven and on earth. As a result, he has planned what he wishes to occur. For example, in the first part of the Lord's Prayer, he found in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus teaches us to pray mm -hmm. that the Father will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When some people think about the will of God, 
They fear that God has decided every little detail of their life. Mm -hmm. But that is not true. Mm -hmm. He has not already decided everything in your life, but God does control many aspects of our lives. Mm -hmm. He gives us a lot of freedom, but he has also constrained us. As it says in Acts 16, 6 through 10, God's will is like a road. He does not carry you walk on the right side, the left side, or down the middle. He does not care if you jump, skip, jog, or walk fast down the road. He does care if you sing or if you are silent, but he cares if you leave the road. He wants you to always stay on the road. Each of us have a different road to travel. The road is God's will for your life. The road will turn and twist, but his plan will be accomplished. The will of God is everything that God desires or wishes to happen in heaven and on earth. God's will is good. That means that God has the highest and the best goals in mind for us. God's will is also acceptable, which means that it is well-pleasing and agreeable. God's will is also perfect, which means it means the needs, it means the needs of the people. Mm -hmm. So how can we know if we are in the will of God? There are four steps. Be sure we are ready in the habit of obeying God. Amen. Decide to always glorify God spiritually and physically. Read and study the Bible constantly and associate with fellow believers in a church where we can receive faithful teaching based on God's word. Mm -hmm. There's a note of authority in the words we read from the Apostle Paul in Romans 12, 1 through 8. He reminds all Christians that we must be careful in how we evaluate our own lives. This evaluation must come from a mind that has been transformed by faith in Christ and not by a mind that has been influenced by the world. Okay. This evaluation must be based on the gifts God has given us and how we use them. Right. We need to have a godly sense of self-worth. It provides a self stable stable middle ground mm -hmm. while being at the heart of a peaceful life. Amen. Paul uses the analogy of the human body to describe the unity of all Christians have in Christ. We are the eyes, ears, head, hands, legs, and feet of Christ. Mm -hmm. All Christians are part of one body of Christ, all of whom have vital parts that work together. Each part is different, but the parts need each other. Christians have individual gifts, and these gifts are really a gift of God's grace. They are like parts of the human body. When one part of the body disappears, we look for it. Question, do you look for a member of the body of Christ when that member disappears? If we truly understand the price of our salvation, we will want to give back to God out of gratitude and thanksgiving. When we truly understand God's mercy, we will want to worship him with every ounce of our being. Okay. God's love and sacrifice for us will motivate us to love and to sacrifice ourselves in return. Mm -hmm. That sacrifice involves using the gifts he has given us to do his work in our world. Amen. If Amen. we want to be the people God wants us to be, yeah. we will do what God wants us to do. Yeah. Amen. Once we are consecrated to God, which means declare oneself sacred and devoted to God's worship and service. It is a solemn and intentional act of giving one's soul, mind, heart, and body to God. Okay. It requires a willing decision to live a life that is set apart for God's purposes. Okay. Yeah. Right. We must not allow ourselves to be conformed to the world and its sinful nature. Right. We must be guided by the Holy Spirit. Amen. This guidance involves two aspects. First, as committed followers of Jesus, all of our actions must be in harmony with the will of God as spelled out in the word of God. Okay. If we meditate on God's word daily, it will shape our thoughts and help us to be more Christ-like. Okay. Then we will act in a way that pleases God. Second, we need to know how our gifts are and how we can use them to serve God. Right. We have to get the best training we can to sharpen these gifts and use them to serve others. Amen. Yes, 
We serve God by serving others. All right. No one even begins to imitate Christ's ministry on his own because his abilities and ministries were so varied. When we come together as one body, we can collectively demonstrate the mean and varied forms of ministry Amen. that he wants to perform through our united effort. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit gives each of us the correct portion so that we can fulfill our individual roles within the entire body of Christ. Amen. We have to consider our roles within the body of Christ mm -hmm. because each of our roles are different. Mm -hmm. Each role is represented by the individual gifts believers have. Mm -hmm. One of the spiritual gifts is the gift of prophecy. Mm -hmm. Old Testament prophets, along with some of the New Testament prophets, had the gift of addressing the future. Okay. Modern prophets do not have this gift. Instead, they are teachers and proclaimers of God's truth. Mm -hmm. My ministry, for example, when I preach, I teach to proclaim God's truth. Another gift is the ability to exhort or encourage those who are hurting, weak, or discouraged. People with these gifts give them sacrificially. Mm -hmm. The church also needs the gift of leadership. In particular, the church needs the gift of leadership that has a sense of what the church needs to do. Amen. People naturally follow leaders who have that gift. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Archbishop Dr. Jerry Jones, for the leadership you provide to us. We look at you as our parent in ministry. All right. Amen. The most important gift is the gift of mercy. Mm -hmm. It is the spirit-given ability to extend love and compassion to those who are suffering. It also involves reaching out to the outcasts of society and other people who are ignored by society. Okay. Amen. Regardless of the gift we have been given, we must not be full of pride. But all the same time, we Amen. must understand how much each and every one of us is valued by God. Amen. Similar to Joseph, with all that was bestowed on him, he did not get caught up into himself, but only continued to stay focused on God and serve the Pharaoh. Amen. Satan can use discouragement to keep us from using our gifts for God's work. And we do not want this to happen. But on the other hand, pride causes us to attribute our contributions to God's kingdom to ourselves and not to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Paul encourages all believers to consecrate themselves to a Christ-like way of life. This does not happen automatically. Right. When we come to Christ, our consecrated bodies are to be sacrificed mm -hmm. to God's constantly undefiled and pleasing to God and his character. We live for Christ because we are grateful for what God has done for us. Okay. Transformation is a positive view of the place where God's redemption unfolds. Mm -hmm. This transformation occurs because of God's grace. Yes. And therefore, yes. we are to give ourselves entirely to God. Yes. Okay. Thus, is what Paul meant when he tells us to present ourselves as a living sacrifice to God. Amen. The world, the world was originally clean, but it has become corrupted by sin, and when Christ returns, the world will be transformed and cleansed. Yeah. We are part of the sinful world, even though we have been transformed by God's grace. Yeah. We learn to see the world through the sacred writings of the Christian religion, which are the scriptures, yeah. and respond to the world as the scriptures tell us. Our mind becomes more and more like God's mind and accomplish God's will. Amen. In ancient times, salt was used to preserve and add flavor to food. Right. When Jesus told his disciples in Matthew 5.13 that they were the salt of the earth, he meant that they could stop the moral decay of society and impact <laughs> generations for Christ as they ministered his, his truth to the world. Amen. We are to be reflections of Christ on earth. This will mean that we will be different from the world, but our mission is to change the world for the better. We cannot change the world until we change ourselves. We are to be servants in the world and not its doormats. We are, we are to have a balanced view of ourselves. We are to see ourselves as God sees us and not in the comparison to others. 
All of us are the same in the eyes of God. He chose all believers, and the choice is made on the basis of grace. In his grace, God is willing to forgive us and Amen. bless us, Amen. even though we fall short of living righteously. Amen. God's grace to mankind began with God's creation of mankind, Amen. knowing man would transgress his law. Mm -hmm. When man chose to transgress the law as written in Genesis 3, 6, you know the story of Adam and Eve, and when the woman saw the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Describe such a battle of the flesh yeah. and obedience to God, the mm -hmm. tendency to follow our own desires. Grace, yes, Amen. this unmerited favor provided by Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. To be the Savior for all mankind, to whosoever believeth in the gospel. This sacrificial, this sacrificial propitiation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, demonstrates God's great love for mankind, as stated in John 3.16, mm -hmm. our theme for 2024. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world yes. that he gave his only begotten son, right. that yes. who should ever believe it on him should yes. not perish but have yes. everlasting life. Yes. 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 yes, folks, this is grace in action. Yes. We did not deserve it, but God provided grace for you. For me and whosoever is willing to accept Jesus Christ as Amen. Lord and Savior. Yeah. In context, grace is God's provision for one to man through each generation, through all his trials, tribulations, struggles, successes, and failures. Mm -hmm. yeah. Transformation causes us to believe God's truth instead of listening to our feelings. It will take time, but eventually God's truth will become part of us. When it does, our relationship with God will be stronger, and the way we think about ourselves will change. Mm -hmm. All of this can only happen when we feed on God's word. Right. Right. Doing God's will with certain conditions is not obedient. Okay. Obeying and following God will mean surrendering everything in our lives to God. If we are not surrendering everything to God, we are not obeying God. Right. Our different gifts must be offered humbly to the body of Christ. Amen. Only within the body of Christ can we, our thoughts, desires, and behavior be renewed and changed. Amen. Paul uses God's mercy to appeal to us as Christians. God's mercy is the key part of a Christian commitment to God. Mm -hmm. In return, we are to show mercy to others. Christian life is marked by transformation and growth in discernment and understanding. Mm. The clemency of God towards believing Christians in providing and offering them a measure of time during which we can survey our lives and recognize through God's grace what we need to do in order to change, mm. conform to Jesus, and work out our salvation by Christ. Amen. Amen. As Christians, we believe that salvation is the saving of humankind from the penalty of sin and its ensuing consequences, which includes eternal death and separation from God. Amen. Salvation is available through Jesus Christ's shed blood, yes. death, and resurrection. Yes. The first act of salvation was in the Garden of Eden, which I spoke about earlier. Scripture explains in Genesis 3, 16 through 19, that God cursed Adam and Eve as he did with the serpent for disobedience. Okay. Even though God forgave them of their sin, he still allowed the consequences to continue. That's right. The final act was Jesus Christ's sacrificial death on the cross at Calvary. Oh, Salvation is the free gift of God to man by grace through faith, completely aside from human works. Amen. As the prophet declares, salvation is of the Lord, Jonah 2, 9. Mm -hmm. Man does not have the ability to earn salvation through the works, but can receive salvation freely through two main words that show up throughout Scripture. Amen. Belief and trust. Yeah. 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 By believing in God, we can obtain salvation. Amen. John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. No one comes to the Father except through me. Right. In closing, remember, salvation is a gift of God. 
grace received through faith in Christ, it is extended to us by God because of his grace. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I'd like to close by saying from Ephesians 2, 8, for by grace you have been saved yeah. through yeah. faith, yeah. and that not of yourself, no. it is the gift no. of God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen, church. Praise yeah. God. Amen. Yeah. The gifts of God, amen, for the people of, of God. Amen. Yeah. amen. Great word, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. amen. Yeah. At this time, amen, the doors of the church are open, amen. Doors of the church are open. And then if there be one who'd like to come and give your life to Christ, one who just would like to come and rededicate, you may do so at this time. Amen. 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 Everyone stand. Amen.